The spirit of naming and discovery can also be brought to understanding fear, another form of aversion. We will encounter this demon over and over again. However, at some point, if we open our eyes and our heart to the fearful mind and gently name it fear, 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 experiencing its energy as it moves through us, the whole sense of fear will shift. And later, we'll simply come to the recognition, recognition. Oh fear, here you are again. How interesting. Fear is always an anticipation of the future, an imagination. Notice what happens to your sense of trust and well-being and your belief about the world. Another form of aversion that we can learn to be mindful of is boredom. Usually we are afraid of boredom and will do anything to avoid it. Boredom comes from a lack of attention. With it, we also find restlessness, discouragement, and judgment. We get bored because we don't like what is happening or because we feel empty or lost. In naming it, we can acknowledge the boredom and let it be a state to explore. The same spirit of naming can be brought to the aversion we call judgment. So many of us judge ourselves and others harshly. You have little understanding of the whole yet have little understanding of the whole judging process. With meditative attention, we can observe how judgment arises as a thought, a series of words in the mind. And when we don't get caught up in the storyline, we can learn from it a great deal about both suffering and freedom in our life. For many people, judgment is the main theme of their life, and a painful one. Their response to most situations is to see what's wrong with it, and in their spiritual practice, the demon of judgment continues to be strong. How can we work with the pain of judging? If we try to get rid of it by saying, oh, I shouldn't be judging, what is that? It's just another judgment. Instead, acknowledge that judgment is arising. Allow it to come and go. Judgments are simply a pre-recorded tape that plays through the mind over and over again. Try to have a sense of humor about your judgments. This will keep them in perspective relative to the rest of your life. To become conscious, we must fully allow each difficult state we have rejected, the judging mind, the desiring mind, the fearful mind, to come and tell us its story until we know them all and can let them back into our heart. The next most common demon to learn to name is a subtle one, the quality of sleepiness and dullness called sloth or turpor. This arises as laziness, tiredness, lack of vitality and fogginess. Our clarity and wakefulness fade when the mind is overcome with sleep and our life or our meditation become unwieldy and cloudy. In our life we experience tiredness because of the breakneck speed of our culture or because we have lost touch with our body. We experience laziness or reluctance in the face of difficult tasks. As we encounter it and name this demon, we will see that sleepiness has three causes. One is the tiredness that signals a genuine need for sleep. The next is a sleepiness that comes as a resistance to some unpleasant or fearful state of body or mind. And the third kind of sleepiness is a result of becoming calm and quiet, but without enough wakeful energy for clear concentration. We are rarely lazy, we are simply afraid. When sleepiness arises and our body is not actually tired, it is often a signal of resistance. Restlessness, the opposite of sleep, manifests as the fourth powerful demon called the pacing tiger. With restlessness, we feel agitation, nervousness, anxiety, and worry. The mind spins in circles or flops around like a fish out of water. The body can be filled with breathless energy, vibrating, jumpy, on edge. When restless, we feel as though we simply have to get up and pace around, turn on the TV, eat, do anything but stay in our body. It can also come as the demon of worry. We sit down to meditate and the mind gets caught in fears and regrets and we spend out hours of stories. In all forms of restlessness, our meditation becomes scattered and it is difficult to stay present. 
The last of the five common demons to test our practice is doubt. Doubt can be the most difficult of all to work with because when we fall prey to it, our practice just stops. We become paralyzed. All kinds of doubt can assail us. Doubts about ourselves and about our capacities. Doubts about our teachers. Doubts about the meditation itself. Does it really work? I meditate and all that happens is that my knees hurt and I feel restless. Maybe the Buddha really didn't know what he was talking about. We might doubt that the path we have chosen is the right practice for us. It's too hard, too serious. Maybe I should try Sufi dancing. Or we think it's the right practice but the wrong time. Or it's the right practice in the right time but our body's not yet in good enough shape. It doesn't matter what the object is. When the skeptical doubting mind catches us, we're stuck. To work with doubt, we must center ourselves and fully come back to the present moment with continuity, firmness, and steadiness of mind. Gradually, this dispels confusion. Along with the naming, doubt can also be dissolved by developing faith. While it is natural for the mind to doubt, our doubt can lead us to a deeper attention and a more complete seeking for the truth. Initially, doubts may come as demons and resistance. It's not working today. I'm not ready. It's too hard. These could be called small doubts. After some practice, we can learn to work skillfully with them. Beyond them rises another level of doubt, one, one which is truly useful to us. It is called the great doubt, the deep desire to know our true na nature or the meaning of love or freedom. The great doubt asks, who am I? Or what is freedom? Or what is the end of suffering? This powerful questioning is a source of energy and inspiration. A power of true inquiry is essential to enliven and deepen our spiritual practice, to keep it from being imid, imitative, intimidative, imitative. Sometimes when the demons are most difficult, we can use a variety of temporary practices that function to dispel them and act as antidotes. For desire, one traditional antidote is to reflect on the brevity of life, on the fleeting nature of outer satisfaction and on death. For anger, an antidote is the cultivation of thoughts of loving kindness and an initial degree of forgiveness. For sleepiness, an antidote is to arouse energy through steady posture, visualization, inspiration, breath. For restlessness, an antidote is to bring concentration through inner techniques of calming and relaxation, and for doubt, an antidote is faith and inspiration gained through reading or discussion with someone wise. However, the most important practice is our naming and acknowledging these demons, expanding our capacity to be free in their midst. Applying antidotes is like using band-aids while awareness opens and heals the wound itself. The purpose of spiritual life is not to create some special state of mind, the state of mind is always temporary. The purpose is to work directly with the most primary elements of our body and our mind. To see the ways we get trapped by our fears, desires, and angers. And learn directly our capacity for freedom. As we work with them, the demons will enrich our lives. They have been called manure for enlightenment, or mind weeds, which we pull up or bury near the plants to give it nourishment. Now for the meditation. Choose one of the most frequent and difficult demons that arises in your practice such as irritation, fear, boredom, lust, doubt, or restlessness. For one week in your meditation, be particularly aware each time this state arises. Carefully name it. Notice how it begins and what precedes it. Notice if there's a particular thought or image that triggers the state. Notice how long it lasts and when it ends. Notice what state usually follows it and observe whether it ever rises very slightly or softly. Can you see it as just a whisper in the mind? See how loud and strong it gets. Notice what patterns of energy or tension reflect the state and the body. Soften and receive even the resistance. Finally, sit and be aware of your breath.
watching and waiting for this demon, and allowing it to come and go, and greeting it like an old friend. Thank you. Namaste.